All right, had a lot of people reach out and say thank you for all the information. It's been very informative. I now understand the uniqueness of HFT and how it's different to mainstream physio, but I have no clue what exercises are being done. Okay, all that is on Chong's page, but I thought I'd put together a couple of very basic, the most basic exercises that hopefully many of you can do to potentially start to see a difference, start to see some improvement, but at the very least understand how all of these unique factors are being applied into hyper arc fascia training and some of these exercises that may be in someone's program, especially at the beginning. To understand all this, I want you to understand one sentence today. This is your homework. Understand this. Hyper arc fascia training is about utilizing isometric fascial tensioning to create new connections in the fascia, both physically and neurologically. Well, what does that actually mean? What, what, do, what do those words mean? So, Isometric, we have three different types of contractions. In a bicep curl, we have a concentric contraction, that would be lifting the arm up. We have the eccentric contraction, that would be having the arm go down. But we also have this thing called an isometric contraction, which is a way in hyperarch fascia training that we are addressing the fascia and being able to utilize the fascia to get it to slide and glide, kick off this metamorphosis, and then create these connections. A way this would be done in the upper body is by creating tension in the hand. So, you can already start to see the tendons and the ligaments starting to become more pronounced as I create tension in my hand. And what this is doing is it's creating a co-contraction, meaning multiple muscle groups are now getting involved and the fascia, the laser fascia, are sliding and gliding and creating new connections. It's being stimulated, messages are being sent. So this is how we're creating these connections. The same thing happens in the foot too with the hyper arc mechanism. So as I said, an example is creating tension like this. This is an isometric fascial tensioning exercise or part of an exercise. And this is what we're going to apply to all the different exercises to be able to remodel the body and start to create these connections. I'm going to show you some exercises in a second. But for now, let that sink in and understand that this is one of the very big differences between hyper arc fascia training and mainstream strength and conditioning. Sorry, let me just add, one of the reasons why we do exercises this way, one of the reasons why hyper arc fascia training has gotten such great results is because we are utilizing what are called myofascial chains. So these are chains and pathways in the fascia that we are using to create connections. So the obvious one is the hyper arc mechanism in the foot, creating the foot to glute to core connection, specifically foot to glute though. And why foot to glute, you might be asking. Well, the glutes are made up of 80 to 85% fascial inserts. So this is where fascia is concentrated and the connections are running to. So we want to strengthen this pathway. In the upper body, we have something similar as well. We have the hand to lat, meaning latissimus dorsi, to core connection. And when we have these connections formed, when force transmission and pressure can be distributed across these myofascial chains, across multiple joints, remember muscles have a start and an end point, fascia doesn't, then we can start to remodel the body and create physical and neurological connections, including unlocking new connections in the neck. But in order for this to happen, we have to do this throughout the entire body, but specifically with the upper body, the hand to lat to core connection is enabling us to remodel the fascia in the neck. I'm going to overlay a video of me doing the rolling so you can see an example. But before we do hyper arc fascia training, we always roll the body out on a tennis ball. You've probably seen foam rollers and massage guns. Why are we not using these? Okay, let's get into that. So when we have a massage gun or a foam roller, there's a couple of reasons why we're not going to use them. The tennis ball, for example, is nice and soft. So we're not going to be giving a very strong stimulus to the fascia. It's not going to be overwhelmed. If you have something that's too hard, or too big of a surface area, like on a foam roller, the layers might not want to slide and glide. They might just stop, because if you're moving big layers of fascia, they're probably not going to want to cooperate with you. Instead, we're using a smaller surface area with a tennis ball, and we're rolling around. So what we want to aim to do is, if you can, I understand some of these positions might be pretty difficult for people, start off between 30 seconds and two minutes. Two minutes is kind of where you want to be at, and do left foot, right foot, calf calf quad quad glute glute hip flexor hip flexor and also tfl and tfl both on the left and the right side tfl meaning on the side of the hip and then if you want to do the upper body you can also do the forearms the shoulders the triceps the serratus the back and also the neck 
I did a lot of rolling on my neck and my head. I had a lot of adhesions, especially on my neck, clearly, but on my skull as well. Now, some of these positions are very hard to get into, and I understand it's not going to be for everyone, so just do what you can. I understand that you might not be able to do two minutes on each body part, just do what you can. And I understand you might not be able to get into any of these positions at all. And that's okay. When we're doing the upper body rolling, it's often best to use a wall and just lean against the wall and do it. So perhaps these are going to be easier than being on the ground and having to hold yourself up with your hands and then moving around. No microphone, so please bear with me. Hopefully there's not too much ambient noise. The only other piece of equipment we're going to need today is a towel. Sometimes in the future you might need a marble. You're probably thinking, why a marble? It's to do with the isometric fascial tensioning, creating the tension. But for now, we just needed the tennis ball and we need the towel. So what we're going to do for this first exercise, it's called the elevated towel curl. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me as I'm explaining this. So all we're going to do is lay the towel on the ground. We're going to get into a staggered position like this. And all we're going to do is put 60% of our weight on the front foot and lift the heel up about an inch or so off the ground. When we do this, it's very crucial that we keep our shin to foot angle at 90 degrees. Very important. And what we're trying to do is see our anterior tibial tendon be active throughout the whole exercise. At the beginning, when people start to do this, you're probably not going to feel it in the areas that we want to ultimately. And this t anterior tibial tendon, the ATT, might not also stay active the whole time. This is perfectly fine. We're starting off, this is the beginning. So it's okay. Ideally, throughout the exercise, we want to be feeling our glutes. However, most people will probably feel their feet and their calves. As the connections get created across multiple bones, joints, etc., then we will start to feel other body areas. So it's okay if you don't feel the glutes. And you probably might even be thinking, how are we going to feel glutes? Trust me, a couple months ago, I only felt my calves, and now I can feel like an 8 to 9 out of 10 contraction in my glutes. Let's get back to the exercise. So... Staggered position, 60% of the weight on the front foot, trying to have the ATT active, foot about an inch, heel about an inch off the ground, and all we're doing, like you would with your hand, like this, not gripping under, but all we're doing is this with our toes. So we're just gripping with our toes like this, torso nice and straight, facing forwards. And if I use a front angle, it would look a bit like this. And we're just going for about two to three minutes. If you can't do two to three minutes, that's absolutely fine. But aiming for about two to three minutes. Now we're going to start to build some connections with our upper body fascia and remodel some upper body fascia. I'll just scoot back a bit so hopefully you can see. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a towel. And like we did with the elevated towel curls, we're going to be putting our hands on the ground, elevating the heel of the hand and just scrunching our fingers like this. This is called the HFT hand curl. So, arms with a slight bend in them but pretty straight. Heel of the hand off the ground and we're just going to be scrunching like this. The HFT push hand. Similar to the hand curls, we're going to be putting our hands in a position like this. So these fingers are all bent down. There should be tension. We should be able to tap on them and they should not move. This one's going to be straight and the thumb tucked in. And what we're going to be doing is making sure we're nice and stable on our feet, our knees slightly bent. I know you can't see down that far, but our knees slightly bent. We're going to be putting our hands in this position. And all we're going to be doing is to about a count of five, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to be applying tension to our hands, making sure all our fingers are nice and stiff and pushing out, just focusing on creating the tension in the hands, nowhere else. Then we're going to turn our hands, and on a count of five, two, three, four, five, pulling in. As we push out, we're going to exhale gently, and as we pull in, we're going to inhale gently. Another incredibly basic exercise that you can do is just sitting on the floor and grabbing our towel, and we can do the HFT towel twist. So all we're doing is putting tension in our hands, and we're just scrunching the towel one way, and then we can scrunch it the other way. All of these exercises we want to be doing for about two to three minutes. But again, if you can't get two to three minutes, 
that's okay. Just do what you are able to do. The last exercise I'm gonna show you is called the HFT wall bounce. Now this is a bit more advanced, but for some of you this may be possible, so just do what you have the capacity for. All we're gonna be doing is putting fascial tensioning back into our hands, not allowing the heel of our hand to touch the wall. What we're gonna be doing is standing about an arm's length away from the wall, legs, knees in a slight bend, again, making sure we're nice and stable on our feet, and we're just going to be bouncing off the wall like this. Again, we should be feeling this in our lap, but if you feel it in other areas, that's okay, because these connections have not been created yet, and this is all part of the journey. So, we're just gonna be doing this. Again, for about two to three minutes. These exercises should be done for no more than two to three times per week because what we're aiming for is in between these sessions, we need neurogenesis to take place. We need the fascia to become updated. I like to picture the fascial network like a spider's web. It's completely different to muscle. When we train the muscle, we're breaking it down and then over the course of a number of days or weeks, we're building it back up. That's not what's happening here. We're adding to this matrix. It's, this is why it's considered the extracellular matrix, the fascia network matrix. So it's like a spider going back over its spider's web, creating new connections that are both physical and neurological. Hopefully you can start doing some of these exercises, potentially seeing some benefits, but at least understanding how this is all starting to come together. Again, I must reiterate, this is not all of the exercises. I had not that it matters because it's different for everyone, but I had about 30 different exercises throughout my program. However, we are including these types of concepts to be able to remodel the body. Again, reiterating that it is about the sequencing of them specifically for your needs, including other elements, not just exercises too, and really to kick off this mechanism and this metamorphosis you will need something different to the next person. So this is why working closely with Chong to be able to remodel your body for your specific needs in the right sequence at the right time is most important. Everyone changes differently over their 12-week period and that's why it's the close one-on-one -on -one work with someone who's done this with hundreds of people to be able to streamline this process best. This is the most important thing.